And there's Mr. Algy joining us. That's your discretion. All right. All right, it's now six o'clock. I will call to order the Hampton County Council uh, meeting, June 29th, 2020, 6 p.m. Moving on to item two on the agenda. Uh, first of all, can everybody hear me? Okay. All right. We're going to invocation pledge of allegiance. That's item two on the agenda. 2.1 invocation. Councilman uh, Wynn, would you lead us in the invocation? Everyone, please stand if you can, and you'll have to unmute. You are still muted. Councilman Wynn, you're still muted. Okay, they didn't hear me. They didn't hear you, sir. Okay. Like yes, sir. Father God, please grant us permission and grace that we go through our procedures tonight with calmness and stillness and able to discuss things. Thank you for making us and, and help us with this virus that's coming through and show us mercy and aid to us in a time of need. A time for joint effort in trying to get our budget done. Please join with us with your grace and permission for the things that we do. I have all and Father knows Amen. Amen. Councilman uh, Hollinsworth, would you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag, flag of, of the, the United, United States, States of, America. of America and, and to, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Thank you, gentlemen. Moving on to item number three, adoption of the agenda and consent agenda. 3.1, consent agenda. 3.2, June 29, 2020, Hampton County Council virtual special meeting agenda. What was the pleasure of council? Mr. Chairman, I move we approve the consent agenda and the agenda for um, the June 29th. All right, we have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. Do we have a second. Any further discussion? People say, see how I did that. All in yeah. favor, we will do a roll call vote. Councilman Hollinsworth? Yes. Councilman Phillips? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Wynn? Yes. And myself? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. We will move on to item number four, public hearings. Before I open the public hearing, I would like to remind everyone that the chairman will maintain order at all times. 
I now open the public hearing. And as per the agenda and our special stipulations for the COVID-19 situation, we have had one gentleman submit three questions in total for in regards to the public hearing. I will read all three questions. I will address the last question and then questions one and two will be referred to the administrator. This is from uh, Mr. Quincy Jones and we appreciate Mr. Jones uh, uh, joining. Question one, with all of the legal fees that Hampton County has paid out over the last several years on various lawsuits, can you tell us exactly How much has been in invoiced thus far for the legal bills in the fight over the airport access with company to fire? Question two, can you tell us how much of the bill has been paid so far over the last three years? Question three, with the lawsuit between CO2, I'm assuming that's a fire, I'm assuming that's short for um, company to fire, in Hampton County getting started again soon, does the council intend on trying to work out a solution with Company 2 Fire, noted here as CO2 Fire, to avoid any additional legal fees of taxpayer money? And like I said, I'll address question three. Um, item three suggests the, an ongoing litigation, so there will be no discussion on this uh, question three. Items one and two essentially ask the same question, just in a different format. And I will defer to the administrator to answer questions one and two. Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman, can you hear me? We have been uh, invoiced yes, and we have paid. And those are the only items that were sent in to us for the public hearing. So at this time, I'm gonna close the public hearing that was item 4.1, third reading of the Hampton County 2020-2021 fiscal year budget. We will now move on to item five on the agenda, public comments. Um, we have no public comments submitted this afternoon. So we will now move on to item six, approval of minutes, 6.1, June 15th, 2020 Hampton County Council virtual meeting. Was the pleasure of council in regards to item 6.1 on the agenda? Mr. Chairman, I've read the minutes. I didn't see anything that caught my eye. Uh, I move that we approve June 15 minutes. All right, we have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor, we will again do a roll call. Councilman Hollinsworth, how do you vote? Yes. Councilman? Uh, yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Wynn? Yes. And myself? Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Item seven, presentations. We have no presentation scheduled this evening. <clears throat> Item eight, appointments. 8.1, Southern Carolina Alliance Board of Directors. You'll each have a ballot with two names and uh, you will need to text or email those to Ms. Newton. And I guess we'll, we'll wait for the results later in the agenda for that. Till everybody gets them in. Item nine, resolutions, proclamations. We have no resolutions or proclamations this evening. Item 10, ordinances, 10.1, third reading of ordinance, 10.3.1, third reading to the Hampton County, 2020, dash 2021 fiscal year budget. What is the pleasure of council? Uh, 
Mr. Chairman, um, with the understanding that we are not um, increasing millage, and uh, I move to approve the 2020-21 fiscal year budget. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? Mr. Chairman. Councilman Wynn. I would like to address this to the full council. And this is my professional opinion. And we have discussed most of this in, in, in our other sessions. The recreational department, I have questions with it. It's projected to receive 82,500. It only worked a quarter. It lost a quarter this year and it's looked promising to lose the rest of this year. I think the more realistic income from it being 2019 or maybe 56,283. And I'd like to be this as posted as regard that we should uh, reduce that back to it from the total general budget. All right. Item two. Uh, Miss Ellie. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Intergovernment revenue. I have a question. Actual audits 2019 was $941,072. It is now projected at $2,265,543 with downfall from the virus countrywide. State agencies project much lower figures. If you don't have the money, you can't spend it. My opinion, 900. I meant 991,072 is the figures we should should project instead of the 2,265. I think that we are in for an economic downfall and we, we must make adjustments so we can keep our employees functional. On item three, general fund, general fund revenue. What is our cash ba balance? I'm told it's less than two months in the cash box. 17,137,087 dollars budget. I understand that the loan of the penny sales tax, 166 or uh, whatever it is, is a part of that amount. If so, is this not tax, tax double taxation? Approximately 7, 17,000 people in Hampton County with $17,137.87 to make school taxes total together with the two budgets is $30 million in taxes for 17 million, I mean 17,000 people. I've suggested in written form, administration, just one example now, and I'm gonna be moving on to everybody in the book. Other screaming is in Hampton County, a six digit salary for our population. We cannot afford this. And I'm asked for, for the budget to be cut as much as it possibly can, much as 45%. Also, I ask in writing how many employees we have in each commissioner and department. I was annoyed. A full councilman myself cannot find out the population we are paying benefits. How else can we figure salaries and transparency and make every penny count and make sure everybody receives the same benefits and knowing also what's in the budget? I have a comment on magistrates. Why do we pay for two districts, one and two? We can't afford to. Hampton magistrate asked for one head, all, all the county, but Estill. I can't see or to find out what the Estill magistrate salary is, but we need to consolidate. Also, what is the true salary of the county attorney? Move your money is money. Just make one magistrate county. The need for the process is to speed up due process. Financial and human resources. Another six digit figure salary. This is not Charleston City. Needs to be job studies and cut. Nobody in this is making six digit salary in Hampton County for wages. Assessor, $357,915, another six-digit salary, 
And we then again, we don't know how many employers will break down on ledger form of, of how many of them let the citizens know how it's divided up and actual costs. And is there a need for it? There's the question there. Is there a need? The tax collector, that's another six digit number. How many employees? Let's find out and see who the salaries go to and what are the job prescriptions. Risk management, only $13,250. What's involved and what department or commission does this interlude? Why so little pay and salary to this, to this commission? The jail, thus figured separate from the sheriff, a combined magistrate with a viable workforce will reduce the holding time of prisoners, due process. That is a shell game where we need to have the detention center and the sheriff's department, which totals $5 million between the two of them out of the $17 million taxable budget. Something's got to give. There's no money like it was. Simple math. We must be concerned about, we must live off what we got. The coroner's salary is $63,000. $107 total, now how many employees got, but that's a reasonable salary for the county to survive. That's an example of what I'm talking about. I don't fully understand emergency preparedness. I know it, it's about $1,977,918. How many employees, dividends, up and benefits, it's probably a good deal, but impossible to figure. Checks and balances, impossible to get a ledger type. All these issues I have been discussed. And this is what we need to hear. And, and the debits and credits and transactions be subtracted to our brothers and sisters on the screen in full amount. Public works again, six digit figures, checks and balances. We ain't picking and leaving nobody out. Same as EMS, no ledger, checks, balances, how many employees, main hours, what is, what is hidden from us to the public? We like to have transparency and a need to micromanage all and get our costs down. If you don't have it, we can't spend it. And I don't, there's a need to say that we've got to live off of grits and not, not stake. Buildings and grounds, maintenance, shop, and lecture, all in the same boat. Economic development, there's a contract sign. Why have the county issued a 167,531 per year when we have a contract? For four years now, it's added up to a half a million dollars. How much income and taxes has this viable research actually bought into the county per dollar for the four years? In my opinion, this is unacceptable amount how much tax money has the SA brought into four years to Hampton County? I don't know. Why invest in the airport? A passion should be, and more money spent on school and needs of our children and safety. There is no window for, I assume, two full-time employees stay, I assume there are two full-time employees stationed there, and when a no trespassing airport the budget should not reflect this with this view and all income needs to be invested in school, our education, safety, and environment. Sheriff's Department, as with the detention center for both, both is out of $17 million budget, we should be with the two departments, brainstorm and work together, bring them in. And again, our economy is, our, our, is in dear shape and we must consider the welfare of our county. Last but not least, third, the, the budget is $17,137.87. The school board equals to $13,144,281, which we can't control, they say. But I don't believe we have any money. That totals to $30,281,368 for 17, approximately 17,000 people. But the school is not operated for a quarter. There should be some drawback from these spent, unspent monies. Let's get our heads together, figuring in good the $30,281,000 and I'm at $31, $368 budget. 
for approximately 17,000 citizens of Hampton County. Mr. Chairman, I turn my chair over to you and with the reflection that I request to, to struggle with the transparency and to be obtained, least take this budget back to the table and start slashing with only five councilmen and a recorder for public sector, sector to be fully informed. Thank you, sir, for your time <clears throat> and diligence, and I appreciate you. Thank you very much, and we appreciate your comments. Um, in our many of those items, if not all, I think all probably were discussed in our budget workshops, and so we, we certainly appreciate your comments. All right, we still have a motion and a second on the floor. At this time, we will go to a vote and see where we go. Councilman Hollinsworth? Yes. Councilman Phillips? Yes. Councilman Williams? Yes. Councilman Wynn? No. And myself, yes. Motion carries four to one. That brings us to item 10.2, second reading of ordinances. We have no second readings this evening. 10.3, first reading of ordinance. We have no first readings. Item 11 on the agenda, bids. We have no bids this evening. Item 12, council briefings, 12.1, chairman's update. At uh, this time, I would like to take a little bit of everyone's time to uh, make note of the film festival we had over at the Palmetto Theater over the weekend. This was all put together with a culmination of the, uh, the Arts Council members, um, Heather Bremer, Georgiana Nadelku and Mr. John Wright really and truly went above and beyond. Uh, they did a lot of work, put a lot of things together in conjunction with the movie producer Chris Forbes and a few of his volunteers as well. The, it was well attended, it was well decorated. I was there myself, Council, I saw Councilman Williams, I saw Councilman uh, Phillips and the administrator were all present. And uh, it just turned out to be a, a, a very nice event. It, it was glad to see some, some films being showed back in the Palmetto Theater. And um, I, for one, had never seen a film in the Palmetto Theater when I was a kid. So it was nice to finally get that opportunity. And that's all I have. Um, item 12.2, the county attorney's update, Mr. Solomons. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, council members, um, I did see some movies in the Palmetto Theater um, and enjoyed every one of them. Um, I don't have anything to report in, from the legal side tonight. All right, thank you, sir. Item 12.3, clerk's update. Ms. Newton, you could probably, if you have the ballots in, you could update us on those as well. Do we have Ms. Newton? I need um, Council Member Williams to text me his vote. Hello? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you. Okay. I need Council Member Williams to text me his vote. Can you hear her, Mr. Uh, Mr. Councilman Williams? You're muted right now. Yes, sir. Go for Clay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, Mr. B Bishop, you have been appointed to the Southern Carolina um, Alliance Board of Directors. All right. Thank you very much. Did you have anything else you would like to add? Not at this time. Thank you. All right, thank you. Item 13, reports to council. 13.1, administrator's report. Ms. Elliott. You are muted, there we go. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, one thing I wanted to update you on, I don't know if y'all remember, council remembers, back in May of 2019, the Council on Aging was placed in the um, high-risk category. And there were a number of issues 
that we had to straighten out. I'm happy to see that we signed the contract for next year with LOCOG and we have been removed from the high risk category. I would like to um, officially recognize Ms. Linda Kearse for all that she has done, her and her staff, to get all of the finances and the operations, reporting and everything up to date and acceptable. Uh, I think they've done a, a, a great job down there. Okay. And, um, I've got Ms. Suzanne here and I want her to update council on uh, where we are with COVID and um, anything else. We're actually 12 o'clock midnight last night, uh, 1,320 cases of COVID in South, in South Carolina. Um, the numbers are steady rising. It is showing us three deaths for Hampton County. Uh, we still are having trouble with DHEC confirming these deaths that are for Hampton County. So I hope to get some clarification on that. Tomorrow is the final day for anyone that has not uh, filed with FEMA for the, to get reimbursement or to get assistance with the, their houses being destroyed during the tornado. But everybody in Hampton County has, that was affected, has applied for assistance. And FEMA has reached out to those people. And we have also, um, and if they had insurance, their insurance companies have helped them as well. So um, there's still a lot going on there. We have started our submission in to FEMA uh, for reimbursement uh, for different things that we have spent during during the tornado and during COVID. And uh, so we are at this point just still pushing for everybody to use social distancing. Uh, a lot of counties around us are pushing for masks to be worn. Uh, however, the governor last Friday did not say he would mandate mask being worn, but we just still need to make sure that we keep these things in mind, even though we know that things around the county need to open back up. I mean, we've got to do things to get things back on track, and um, it's going to take a lot of effort from a lot of people. Thank you. And that's all I have, sirs. All right. Thank you all very much. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Moving Bishop. On to item four. Yes, ma'am. Um, I just wanted to um, mention um, to keep the family of Virginia Sinclair in prayer. She was the first um, yep. female yep. administrator for the county. Um, I don't know how many of, I know some of you remember her, remembered her, um, but just keep their family in prayer. Ellie, she was the first Thank to very much. South Carolina. In the state, yeah, the state of South Carolina. I know she was for Hampton County and the state of South okay. Carolina. All right. All right. We will definitely be praying. All right. That brings us to item 14 on the agenda executive session. We have no matter scheduled. Item 15 reports out of executive session. We have no matters to report. Item 16, adjournment. Do we have a motion for adjournment? Mr. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. We have a proper motion. Do we have a second? Second. Did someone just make a second? Okay, yes, we second. have a second. All right. All in favor, roll call vote again. Mr. Hollinsworth? Yes. Councilman Phillips? Yes. Councilman Williams. Councilman Williams, are you with us? I think we lost Councilman Williams. Yes. Councilman Wynn? Yes. And myself? Yes. Motion carries. You all have a blessed evening and thank you for all you're doing. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.